Right after I received my DJI Osmo Action 4, I was lucky enough to spend a week at a fishing camp in northern Saskatchewan with it, which was a perfect place to test it out. Besides a short stint with a GoPro Hero 10 a while back, this is my first extended experience with an action camera, and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. I'm going to go through the good and bad points I found out about this camera while using it for the past week, and hopefully my experience helps you decide if this is the right camera for you. Like always, let's go through the good points first. I've never owned a waterproof camera before, unless you want to count my phone as a waterproof camera, but I wouldn't feel comfortable putting my phone on the end of a pole and sticking it underwater like I do with this action camera. Couple that with the magnetic clip and it allows for some really crazy shots. The other thing that's really cool is the Horizon Steady in 2.7K. It's not available in 4K unfortunately, but it's still pretty awesome. So whatever the orientation of the camera is, it always keeps the horizon up. So that's what lets me shoot some of these underwater fish things and follow them out of the water into the net. The other thing that's really cool with this is that magnetic clip. That magnetic clip is really awesome, as long as you attach it properly. There's only one way to attach it, with the DJI logo facing forward, and then you have to make sure the clips engage. Uh, the magnet's pretty strong, so if you don't have it both engaged, it'll still hang on, but it, not as much as if you have both engaged. So if you jar it too much and it's not, you might lose your camera. So just make sure both clips are engaged and it holds really well. The dynamic range on this camera is quite good. I was really impressed with it. I didn't expect it to do as well as it did. As you can see by these shots, it's into the sun and you can still see all the land and there's still some color to them. They're not just completely dark or completely blown out. So I was pretty happy with that. On top of that, I really like the colors in the standard color profile. They're pretty punchy, which I like. Not everybody does, but I do. And as you can see in this video, the colors are fantastic straight out of camera. I don't have to go home and fool around. I can just load them in my editing software and put the clips together and I'm good to go. Probably one of the bigger reasons I really like this camera is the ease of use. I found not a whole bunch of difficulty in switching between resolutions and stabilizations so that I could, you know, keep the horizon up or just get the best overall picture and still have the horizon steady where you can, you know, rotate it by 45 degrees each way or just shut it off to get the best picture possible. It's really easy to do with just quick swiping up, uh, swiping to the side and the menus are laid out well and they just make sense, so it's really easy to use. You can tell that they took their time figuring out how to set up menus properly, and I think it really paid off well. Let's move on to the things I don't like as much about this camera, although there isn't a whole lot. The biggest problem with pretty much all small cameras, and especially action cameras, is definitely low light. And this does have some issues. I had a lot more hope for it because of the larger sensor size. And maybe it's because I haven't done enough tweaking in the settings. But probably the bigger issue with the low light footage is the amount of noise reduction that it puts on it. It kind of looks like, you know, really mushy. Uh, mushy. I don't know how you want to pronounce it. I'm Canadian. Is it mushy? Is it mushy? I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, so I know there's a noise reduction setting and I'm probably going to play with that when I test it against the Pocket 2 for low light. But uh, yeah, right out of the box, wasn't super happy with low light footage, that's for sure. <gasps> Stabilization on this camera in bright light is amazing. Works fantastic, perfectly every time. But 
as soon as you get into a bit of a low light situation, you can start to see a lot of jitter. It's not horrible. It's much better than the GoPro I tested a few years ago, but it's still there. And the last issue that I have with this camera is the audio recording. When you have this camera pointed away from you, it doesn't pick up your voice all that well, probably because the two main microphones are forward facing and then there's one downward facing that's a wind reduction microphone. I'll play you a couple of clips here and you'll see how when there's some background noise, it almost seems like it's clipping the audio a little bit. It's better as soon as I face it towards myself and worse when I face it away. 100 kilometers an hour, testing one, two, three, one, two, three. Testing one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm used to the audio on my Pocket 2, which has a really good omnidirectional sound. So to me, this is a little bit of a negative. It's not terrible, but it's a little bit of a negative. Overall, I am super impressed with this camera. It was a lot of fun to use. I put it in situations that I would never have put any other camera before, and it worked like a champ. So I'll probably do a lot more with it in the future. I am going to put it up against a Pocket 2 and do some side-by-side -side comparisons in an upcoming video because supposedly the low-light footage is a lot better than the Pocket 2, but I want to test that. So that's coming up sometime in the near future, and hopefully I helped you make a decision if you're interested in buying one of these things. I don't think you'd go wrong.